look at uh, two applications of uh, Bessel functions. So mainly this comes up in a frequency modulation. At least that's the way, best way to. Uh, so frequency modulation is where you put the information in the phase along with the carrier here. So you put the uh, message uh, here some constant multiplied by ft. And if you take the ft to be, let's say, a single tone, just to see its effect in terms of what is the requirement in bandwidth. So this comes out to be cos omega naught t plus kp naught, if you call it some constant beta sine b naught t. Uh, so this actually can be, as we showed earlier, can be expanded in terms of uh, a power series. Uh, so it, it will look like this. Uh, so the easiest way to do this is by put omega equal to zero and see that it's a periodic function and do the expansion. Then the constants turn out to be the uh, quantities that is of interest to us. So that's the, these are the Bessel function coefficients and its integral form is uh, it will turn out to be like this. So you can see these are real and uh, it has a few properties. Uh, so J of JK, uh, JK of minus beta is also the same as minus 1 to the power k uh, j of uh, jn of beta. And same thing goes with uh, j minus k beta is minus 1 to the power k jk beta. Now this also, this, uh, so this is the, uh, at least one way to open this up. So this also has a power series uh, expansion. So if I use the variable x instead of uh, n, so the integral becomes uh, 1 over 2 pi But this is also minus 1 to the power m, x over 2 to the power n plus 2m. And uh, n plus m factorial, m factorial, m goes from 0 through infinity. Now to get this, you can start from here, uh, rewrite this as, uh, start from here. Re rewrite it as the real part of, replace the cosine by e raised to j, and write it as two terms, expand this as a power series, which we have done in earlier, and you end up with this expression. Sometimes this is also written as x to the power n minus 1 to the power m, x to the power 2m, and then 2 to the power n plus 2m, So this is the second form. This is form one. Uh, this is form two. So from here we also see that uh, for any n uh, greater than zero, uh, the initial value is zero. So if you draw these pictures, so they qualitatively go like this. So j zero is uh, starts at one. All the other one, j's start from. Origin. So this all will be J case. <coughs> now, if you take the derivative and again take the second derivative and actually manipulate, the yeah, easiest one is to use this expression, this uh, power series expansion. Then you get this differential equation, and this is the interesting part. I 
I mean, whatever variable, let me write it as x. Again, I've shown this in the earlier. So I'm just quoting this. So this is the third representation. So in any physical problem, if you can match your problem to one of these aspects, then Bessel function comes in. So I will discuss the spring which I have discussed earlier. Then we will also look at the possibilities in Brownian motion. So a spring, an ideal spring has uh, a force is uh, proportional to the, uh, dip, is pulled back by the stretch of the spring. Right? Inverse, so the farther you stretch, <coughs> the spring force will be uh, inversely proportional. So this is m dxt by dt. So that gives uh, d squared xt by dt squared plus k over m. This is positive xt equal to 0. So if you call this quantity to be omega 0 squared, the solutions are well known. An ideal spring, it just uh, cos omega naught t plus b sin omega naught t. So you can rewrite this as so undamped uh, motion. It goes on forever. But if there is some drag or something, so this is the ideal case. This is uh, with drag. So this equation now becomes also uh, proportional to the velocity. So rewriting this equation now, this will read d squared xt by dt squared plus c over m dxt by dt plus k over m xt equal to zero. And uh, this if I call beta, and this is omega 0 squared. Again, this is standard uh, equation. But to solve it, you try the solutions of this form. A e raised to alpha t, Euler's method. So that will give rise to a quadratic uh, alpha squared uh, plus beta alpha plus uh, omega 0 squared should be 0. So two roots alpha 1 and alpha 2. So they are given by minus beta plus minus square root of beta squared minus 4 omega 0 squared by 2. So the quantity is what happens to beta, the discriminant, uh, 4 omega 0 squared. There are three cases, positive, 0, negative. Over damped, critically damped, and under damped. So if it is positive, you get, uh, this is 4. If it is positive, gamma is positive, beta squared minus 4, omega 0 squared is positive. But gamma still will be less than beta, you can see. So the two, so alpha 1 would be gamma plus uh, or beta minus beta plus gamma and alpha 2 is uh, minus beta minus gamma by 2. Both are negative and so it will be two damped exponentials. So the solution is of this form. Uh, so the solution in case 1 would be x of t would be a e raised to minus alpha 1 t plus b e raised to minus alpha 2t. That's the oh, first case, over damped. And now if it is critically damped, gamma is zero. So you, you have both alpha 1 and alpha 2 are just minus beta by 2. Uh, so then you again uh, fi try to find another independent solution and uh, that turns out to be, so 
so in the case second case a co a e raised to minus uh, so alpha is just beta beta t by 2 plus b t e raised to minus beta t so this will be an independent solution you can check it out otherwise you start with the function ft and the first the simplest function we could find out substitute and get a quadratic you will see that f squared t is 0 so that gives f prime is not f squared f double prime t is 0 so that gives f prime t to be a constant and ft to be t so the third case is uh, underdamped then gamma uh, this is negative so we can write it as uh, beta squared minus 4 omega 0 squared is minus omega 1 squared so that alpha 1 is uh, here minus beta of plus j omega 1 by 2 alpha 2 is uh, minus beta minus j omega 1 by 2 so you get uh, damped sinusoid so this is a cos a e raised to minus alpha beta t by 2 cos omega 1 t plus some phase if you combine the two terms so that's what it is so now if you want to I, uh, we can look at uh, before I go into the Brownian motion, we can look at this case where this constant uh, slightly changes with respect to time. So let me copy this uh, differential equation. So if it, um, with respect to time, it's possible this uh, equation won't look like this. So this is age to bring up uh, a, this constant omega 0 squared. And now you can see that it's also slowly decay. So how do you solve this? So for this it looks like uh, it, uh, we need to define a new variable and uh, we will look for a solution for uh, in terms of u. In other words, basically we will look for in terms of u. Yeah, we may as well uh, take this omega zero also. So this will be... Basically, these are constant, but hmm? right, just omega zero. Right. All right. So then, uh, dxt by dt is what we we need d squared, but we'll start with this. So this is uh, d uh, y u by d u and du by dt uh, so from here du by dt is uh, minus a by 2 then the whole thing so that's u so this is minus a by 2 u dy by du so if you take the d squared xt that's going to be d by du of 
this quantity of minus uh, a by 2 u dy by du and then du by dt which is this so if I substitute that we get uh, minus a by 2, we pull out minus a by 2, so that becomes a squared by 4, then a u, uh, then, uh, yeah, yeah, this is, uh, so this needs to be done, so a squared, so this a squared by 4 is fine, and u is fine, that's from this part, a, a by 2 pulled out, but then you have to take the derivative of this. So that will be <coughs> u multiplied by derivative of uh, u with respect to u. So that will be 1. So that's just a dy by du plus u multiplied by d squared y by. And uh, If you substitute that into this equation, 1 now becomes a squared by 4, uh, that's common. Then the first, the, use, uh, the d squared y by du squared has a coefficient, a u squared. The next term is u dy by du plus uh, uh, this quantity is the way we have defined a squared by 4 u squared. So you can see why the 2 over a was introduced. So we can pull it out and this becomes u squared. We'll use the new variable. So this quantity, of course, we notice that is a special case of uh, this equation with n equal to 0. Uh, so the solution is uh, so when there is aging involved x of t which is y u is some constant j naught of u. u is uh, 2 over a omega not e raised to minus 80 by 2. Now you can decide this constants etc by initial conditions but this is the uh, general result. So before I proceed to the uh, second example uh, let's say the we look at uh, the same issue with the damping involved. Uh, so everything is same as before except there is a middle term. The spring has got the ideal spring has got three cases over damped, under damped. I'll just write down. So solutions are whereas here it is a e raised to minus beta t by two uh, damped exponentials. And uh, with H, X of T is uh, J naught of uh, some constant E raised to minus 80 by 2. Oh, 
or from here. If you know more about the, uh, uh, the initial conditions, then we can use the zeros of the J0 just to match that. Anyway, so if you go to this, it's uh, essentially the same as that, except uh, you have to also put in the middle term. So we can re redo it here. So there will be one more term here because you just have to add the beta multiplied by dxt by dt, which is <coughs> minus a by 2 u dy by dt. But remember, we are pulling out uh, a squared by 4. So this equation will become du squared d squared y by du squared. There is only one term here. So u multiplied by 1 minus 2 beta over a, I guess. So the equation modifies to that because you just introduce the middle term. <coughs> so, so to remember, this is not in the form of the Bessel function, but uh, somebody had fi uh, figured out this, or this is actually again goes back to old days. If you define this to be, so then this equation uh, p equal to, to beta over a, then this equation becomes d squared y over du squared plus 1 minus 2p u dy by du plus u squared y equal to 0. So, so solve this, we will have to make a new transformation. And that is, uh, you define a z u to be u to the power p, or oh, so the other way. a new function cu uh, but in terms of uh, so if you make this then I'll just uh, so you'll have to essentially find the dy by du d, d, dy by du turns out to be p u to the power p so you just have to do this chain rule p minus 1 z plus u p z d c by du And d squared y by du squared is p multiplied by p minus 1, u p minus 2, z plus uh, the derivative of this is, uh, so, so this term will come twice, so 2p minus 1 dc by du now if you substitute these two into this a lot of terms will simplify and uh, And this equation actually reduces to uh, the, yeah, maybe I'll write it. This equation now reduces to
for notice that's the same as what we started with, this equation. So ZU is a so here ZU is a solution of the Bessel, the general Bessel, the general Bessel equation, this equation. That means uh, ZU is uh, JPU. So from here you can write down X of T, which is Y of U, is uh, UP JPU with the U equal to the same substitution, uh, 2 over A omega naught e raised to minus a t by 2, half of this. So you can substitute it here, you can essentially see, again it's of this form, so as opposed to what we started with, just a, a damped uh, cosine waveform in the for the ideal spring with some uh, damping versus a damped spring which is also ages with respect to time. So all these things can be <coughs> plotted so this is the damped spring versus uh, uh, doubly dam uh, doubly damped uh, output. So I suspect this will go much faster than uh, the ideal case with even with the damping. Now uh, with this, I want to roll over and uh, look at the a stochastic problem, Brownian motion, and show some similarities. So here, so I'm uh, without much introduction. I'm going to. So the question is, a series representation of stochastic processes. So the theory is, if you know the autocorrelation representation of Let's just stick to Brownian motion. This is true for any stochastic process. So you have a pro x of t you have, you want to write this as a series. So these are random variables now. And these random variables, uh, we want them to be uncorrelated. So CK is, uh, and these functions are, phi k's are orthogonal. And so CK will turn out to be integral. And you can't do this forever, but you can do it over some duration. So we want to mimic this uh, mean squared periodic process. We want to represent a stochastic process over some time <coughs> in a discrete fashion without losing, at least in the mean squared sense, the left side and right side are equal. <coughs> then this is, you can see from here, this will be x of t, phi k of t. So if you want these coefficients to be uh, ck's and cj's, ck, cm to be uncorrelated, so you want this to be, but on the other hand, CKCM is double integral. 
expected value of xt1, xt2, uh, phi kt1, phi <coughs> mt2, dt2, dt1. Uh, but this expected value is the autocorrelation function. So this is the, we'll have to solve this integral equation. So this is a, uh, if you want to approximate or in uh, real practice, a stochastic frozen <coughs> process over a desired time need to be represented using a set of discrete values. This is the way to go. The catch is you can't use any functions to discretize them. You will have to use these functions. So if I simplify this a little more, this equation now reads rxxt1 over t2. So remember, rxxt1 t2 is the autocorrelation function, rxx. So this is non-negative definite uh, properties and so on. It should be equal to this uh, delta k delta j. So this we can write it as lambda k integral. So this integral should be true for, uh, so we can rewrite, you bring this term inside this, so this will read now like. And if you want this to be true for all values of m, etc., then this should be identically equal to zero, and that gives rise to the classic uh, Carnot and Loewe expansion. So the catch is you need to solve this integral equation. Not everywhere, uh, the variable, uh, wherever you are interested, which is 0 to t. So if you can solve this integration, then this problem can be solved. Any, any process, including a Brownian portion, you can uh, discretize it. So the discretization is not using exponential components, but using some orthonormal functions which are appropriate to the, which are process dependent. So the process dependent is from here. You need to figure out the orthonormal. So in the discrete case, you can see this actually looks like an eigenvalue solution. Uh, so you can discretize and find out also. But let me apply this to the Brownian case because it actually leads to the same uh, solutions. Brownian case, if you are familiar with it, the autocorrelation function has a simple form. Autocorrelation function Rxx t1 gamma t2 is alpha minimum of t1 gamma t2. That's because if you uh, write the processes xi, xi over time, discrete is, uh, so if t1 is here and t2 is here, you notice that each of them have equal variance uncorrelated. 
so T1 and T2 are here. Whatever is happening here is independent of this. So the uh, x, x of T1 multiplied by x of T2 <laughs> only dip, uh, depends on the variance of alpha T1. So the minimum, in fact, comes up. So if I plug in this into this expression, remember, we need to integrate from 0 to t and the variable is t1 so t2 is somewhere right so this will read initially this expression goes from 0 to t2 here 0 to t2 and then from t2 to t but look at here from 0 to t2 t2 is the larger one so this is simply alpha t1 phi t1 dt I'm taking this one, phi k. The k at the eigen function. So this is, uh, from here you can see it's the k at the eigen function corresponding to the k at the eigen value is the solution that we are looking for. And when t1 is beyond this, t2 is the minimum. So this is alpha t2 phi k of Remember, the integration is with respect to t1. So this is lambda k phi k t2. This is the equation we need to solve. So this is differential integral equation. So I'm going to take the derivative with respect to t2. Remember, the equation is a function of t2. So here, derivative of the top limit, that's 1. Substitute here. So that becomes alpha t2 when you do this operation phi k of t2 plus here the top limit is a constant so derivative of the bottom limit which is minus uh, which is 1 so with a minus 1 substitute it here so that's alpha t2 phi k of t2 and then the derivative of the this with respect to t2 there is nothing to take here derivative with respect to t2 here will be Uh, will be alpha, the integral remains the same. So that is t2 to t, derivative with respect to t2. So that's alpha phi k t1 dt1 equal to lambda k derivative of with respect to t2 on the other right side. So this and this cancel. So we get one equation d phi k t by dt is uh, lambda k integral alpha t2 to t phi k t. All right, so we got rid of one integral, so we'll do the derivative one more time. So this gives d squared phi k t by dt squared equals here the derivative is the, the variable is in the bottom limit so derivative of it is one so with a minus sign minus alpha because it's in the bottom limit substitute it here so you get phi k of t so this is a familiar equation so the solutions or oh, also there are two initial conditions. If you go back to the original function, and if you, let's see here, this is the original function. So if you put t2 equal to 0, notice this becomes 0 to 0, so that's gone. Here becomes 0 to t, but there is a t2 here, so this also is 0, so we get one initial condition. Then we look at the next one. If you can put the derivative equal to zero. This goes zero to t. So that will be something. But we can get a zero condition by putting t2 equal to Z, t, capital T. So if you put the derivative of ek to capital T, that's also zero. In any case, if when you rewrite this equation, you can rewrite this as plus this equal to zero. 
So the, then again the solutions are in this case surprisingly uh, sine and cosines. I, I missed an alpha lambda k somewhere. So there is a, a lambda k here, right? And lambda k here. So this is lambda k. I'm going to call this omega k squared. So this is omega k t. And if you combine the two solutions, you'll get like this. So it's a simple, again, like a spring, uh, ideal spring. So what I want to do is here just to show you, suppose, you know, nothing is, stays the same with respect to time forever. Uh, suppose in this, uh, so well, first of all, if you use, so here you can use the uh, DFT components or the sines and cosines, except the omega k you need to figure out. So the omega k you can figure out using this uh, uh, initial conditions because the, this will go to zero at uh, pi. A derivative of this will be sine, so that will go to zero at pi, or multiples of pi, odd multiples of pi, and you substitute for t, you can uh, get the lambda k values, right? Because the derivative of this is sine omega k t, so capital omega k t should be 2k plus 1 multiples of pi, that's the condition, but omega k is square root of alpha over lambda k multiply. So from here you can uh, see that lambda k is or um, constant but approximately 1 over 2k plus 1 squared. So you don't have to worry about too many components because the dk is square of the... So you can discretize using simply a few sines and cosines. But that will not be the case if uh, this alpha k here also, like before, uh, varies with respect to time. So you can see if you do all that, so we'll pick up from here, right? So we have d squared phi t by dt squared. Uh, plus omega k squared e raised to minus uh, a t then phi of t equal to zero. So we are back to a case which we had before which, which was this is the same as the ideal spring with uh, so we should define A new variable as uh, u and uh, instead of phi t, we write it in terms of y of u. So this we perceive, this we did this before. So you find out d phi phi dt, then you take the second derivative. So if you go through this, you're going to get this equation. And uh, that from here is the Bessel function corresponding to a zeroth order. So this phi k of t is uh, going to be j naught of uh, u. And we, can, we have initial conditions, so we can use the initial conditions. Essentially, that's going to translate to the restrictions using the zeros of the J naught. And uh, so that's the effect of uh, time. So notice that the, it's, 
J0 itself decays, but this decay is much faster because of this exponential nature of the variable. So the uh, ideal uh, Brownian equation where the alpha, so for example, the climate change or whatever, the, uh, any physical phenomenon you study, the alpha for is not the same what it was 50 years back. So it has changed with respect to time. And the effect of that is uh, seems to be a faster decay on the of, on the functions. In other words, the functions, so if this function decays much faster, uh, you only need, uh, the, to find out the CKs again, you only need uh, a less amount of uh, data. And uh, it will be interesting to carry this forward and see what are the eigenvalues and so on. <coughs> 